we have already learnt a bit about nucleophilic substitution reactions. In this video, we will investigate two different reaction pathways by which this type of reaction can occur. We call these pathways mechanisms. We will also learn about the difference in these two pathways in terms of the molecules they involve and the rate laws of these mechanisms. But first, let's recap some groundwork. We know that nucleophiles are reactant species which are electron rich and that they are electrostatically attracted to electrophiles which are positively charged or electron deficient. A nucleophile donates a pair of electrons to the electrophile and a bond is formed. The nucleophile acts as a Lewis base since it is an electron pair donor and the electrophile as a Lewis acid since it accepts the electron pair. We learned that some nucleophiles are neutral but possess a lone pair which they can donate, for example water and ammonia, while some are negatively charged such as the hydroxide ion and halide ions. We also know that in a nucleophilic substitution reaction, a nucleophile substitutes for or replaces a substituent on the substrate. This happens when the nucleophile attacks the electrophilic center. The bond between the electrophile and substituent breaks and a leaving group is formed, taking both electrons from the bond with it. We also already know that if the substrate is a halogenoalkane, the carbon-halogen bond is polar and it is the electron deficient carbon atom which then acts as an electrophile. Here in this video, we will investigate two possible mechanisms by which halogenoalkanes undergo nucleophilic substitution. Specifically, let's look at how primary and tertiary halogenoalkanes react with nucleophiles. In a primary halogenoalkane, the carbon atom of the carbon-halogen bond also has at least two hydrogen atoms attached to it and a maximum of one R group, which could also be a hydrogen atom or an alkyl group or an aryl group. For example, if the R group is a methyl group and the halogen is chlorine, the molecule is 1-chloroethane. Drawing the structure using dash wedge notation, we notice a tetrahedral arrangement of the four groups around the electrophilic carbon. Since there is little steric hindrance here due to the two small hydrogen atoms, the nucleophile can attack from this side of the molecule on the opposite side to the leaving group. This is called backside attack. Let's let the nucleophile be a hydroxide ion from warm aqueous sodium hydroxide. And the leaving group is chlorine. The nucleophile forms a weak bond to the electron deficient carbon and the carbon-halogen bond weakens. The carbon atom now has five bonds, which is an unstable state. And so this species exists for only a moment in time and is called a transition state. The transition state is always shown with dotted bond lines to the nucleophile and leaving group, square brackets and a negative charge. The step of the mechanism is slow. Since both the bond formation and bond breaking processes occur at the same time, this is called a concerted or one-step reaction. There is no intermediate and the next step happens very rapidly with the heterolytic fission of the carbon-halogen bond. The products are a primary alcohol, in this case ethanol, as well as a chloride ion. The slowest step in a reaction is the rate determining step. And since the slowest step here depends on the concentrations of both the reactant species, this mechanism is said to be bimolecular. Let's create some space. We can now deduce the general rate law, which is second order overall. And this is the specific rate law for this specific reaction. Again, this reaction mechanism is a substitution reaction which is nucleophilic and bimolecular, and so we call it an SN2 mechanism for short. 
since there is only one step and therefore one transition state in an SN2 mechanism, its energy profile diagram has only one peak. Notice that in an SN2 mechanism, the arrangement of atoms becomes inverted, much like an umbrella on a very windy day. Since there is only one 3D configuration of the product from a given reactant, SN2 reactions are said to be stereospecific. Now that we know how primary halogenoalkanes undergo substitution reactions, let's turn our attention to tertiary halogenoalkanes. In a tertiary halogenoalkane, the carbon atom of the carbon-halogen bond has no hydrogens attached to it, but has three R groups, either alkyl or aryl groups which may or may not be the same. If the three R groups are methyl groups, we get 2-bromo-2-methylpropane. The three alkyl groups are bulky and create a lot of steric hindrance around the electrophilic carbon. This hinders the attack of the electron-deficient carbon by a nucleophile. A concerted or one-step substitution cannot occur. So, instead, a two-step mechanism occurs. First, the leaving group heterolytically cleaves off the molecule, producing a positively charged carbocation intermediate and a halide ion. This happens slowly. The carbocation is trigonal planar, which means that in step two, an incoming nucleophile such as a hydroxide ion can attack the carbocation from either side of the plane, above or below, forming a tertiary alcohol, in this case 2-methylpropan-2-ol. This step is FOST. We said a moment ago that an SN2 reaction will not occur with a tertiary halogenoalkane because steric hindrance from the alkyl groups prevents the nucleophile from attacking. A second reason why SN2 reactions do not occur with tertiary halogenoalkanes is because the three alkyl groups on the carbocation create a positive inductive effect, donating electron density to the carbon atom and stabilizing the positive charge. Since the carbocation is stabilized, it persists in solution long enough to then react with nucleophiles. The slow step is the rate determining step. And therefore, the rate is dependent on only the concentration of one species, the halogenoalkane. And so this is a unimolecular reaction mechanism. The rate is first order overall. And this is the rate law for this specific example. This mechanism is called an SN1 mechanism. It is a substitution reaction by an incoming nucleophile with a unimolecular rate determining step. Since there are two steps in an SN1 mechanism, its energy profile diagram has two peaks. These represent the activation energy for step 1 and the activation energy for step 2. The dip in between the two peaks represents the energy of the carbocation intermediate, which is involved in both steps. The two peaks represent transition states, one for each step. Note, however, that in the reaction mechanism, we have not shown transition states and you are not expected to do this for SN1 mechanisms. Since the carbocation is trigonal planar and can be attacked from either side of the plane by the nucleophile, an SN1 mechanism is not stereospecific. In this example, the three R groups are the same, and so regardless from which side of the plane the nucleophile attacks, either from the top of the plane to form this molecule or from the bottom to form this molecule. The two organic product molecules are identical in every way. And so we can represent it like this without any information on its 3D configuration. However, if the 
three R groups are all different. The organic product which forms has two possible configurations in space. And since each molecule is chiral with four different groups around the carbon atom, and since these two molecules are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, they are enantiomers. The product mixture contains a 50-50 ratio of these enantiomers and is therefore referred to as a racemate or a racemic mixture. Again, SN1 reactions are not stereospecific even when all three R groups are different. If primary halogenoalkanes undergo SN2 reactions and tertiary undergo SN1, what mechanism occurs for a secondary halogenoalkane? Data from experiments shows that secondary halogenoalkanes undergo both SN1 and SN2 mechanisms, depending on the reaction conditions, namely the nature of the solvent, the strength of the nucleophile, and the type of leaving group. The nature of the leaving group also affects the rate of a substitution reaction. From the bond enthalpies of different carbon halogen bonds, we can deduce that carbon iodine bonds, which have the lowest enthalpy, are the weakest bond, and carbon fluorine bonds with the highest enthalpy are the strongest. Therefore, carbon iodine bonds break the most easily, and iodine is the best or strongest leaving group. And carbon fluorine bonds break the least easily, and so fluorine is the worst or weakest leaving group. From this information, we can conclude that halogenoalkanes with the same carbon chain length and branching, but containing different halogens, will exhibit different rates of nucleophilic substitution reactions. And we can rank the halogens from strongest or best leaving group to weakest or worst leaving group. Now, let's summarize the key points from this video. In a nucleophilic substitution of a halogenoalkane with a hydroxide nucleophile, an alcohol and a halide ion are produced. For primary halogenoalkanes and tertiary halogenoalkanes, the substitution tends to happen by different mechanisms. SN2 mechanisms are favoured by primary halogenoalkanes. A concerted or one-step mechanism occurs where the nucleophile attacks the electrophilic carbon at the same time that the leaving group departs. One unstable transition state forms. Since the nucleophile attacks on the opposite side to the leaving group, there is an inversion of the arrangement on the electrophilic carbon, and this mechanism is therefore stereospecific. The rate law is second order, which means the rate of the reaction depends on the concentrations of both the nucleophile and the substrate. SN1 reactions are favoured by tertiary halogenoalkanes. A two-step mechanism occurs where first the leaving group leaves and a carbocation intermediate forms. The intermediate can then be attacked from either side of the plane by the incoming nucleophile. And so the reaction is not stereospecific. If the three R groups are different, a racemate of enantiomers is produced. The rate law is first order and depends only on the concentration of the halogenoalkane. And finally, the order of ease with which a halogen leaves is first iodine, then bromine, then chlorine, then fluorine.